Okay, welcome guys. We're here with uh, New Zealand legend, Mr. Touch, Peter Walters. Welcome. Welcome to Inferno TV. Mate, um, just firstly, you've brought over a development site. It's the second or third time you've done it. How are the guys going? They're going really good. The kids love these tours and they uh, they learn lots about, not just about touch, but about life as well. So they're, they're really good development tours. That's great. And uh, are they having a few wins? Yeah, they are, which is which is always great. I mean, the kids love to win, obviously. For us, it's not so much about the winning because we're not going to win them all because it's uh, you know it's a higher level that they're up against. Um, but they're certainly <laughs> learning learning lots about the game. And you just mentioned then it's not only about the touch, but it's about uh, teaching in the rules of life, so to speak. So um, that's obviously with yourself and a few other mentors. That's obviously got to be a great benefit for the young kids. It is, and what we're finding, and we've, we've been doing these tours for three years now, is that a lot of them are a high number of them are they're pathwaying into our. 19s and 21s. In fact, last year we had two girls that went straight out of our 70s into the Open Women's and played in the last series, so it's a great pathway. Yeah, that's a fantastic effort. Um, just uh, noticed that Gavin Shuka, the Queensland captain's uh, come, uh, men's 30s captain, has come past, so I'm going to just get him to ask you a few questions. But just before I do, obviously the, the events combined and you've got the State of Origin um, series as well, so obviously your kids will get to have a look at that. And, and yourself, uh, do you have a team that you go for at all in Origin? Yeah, I suppose I do. I mean, um, I don't think many people know about it, but um, I suppose just quite a bit. I did play for the Blues back in 2000. <laughs> so you're a so, Blues man? Well, yes, I am. Yeah, and, um, yeah, I remember uh, I was doing the Whitewash series back in 2002 that I was involved with, with the Blues. Yeah, yeah good one, happy mate. with that. And we just got Gavin. Gavin, you got a question for Pete? I got nothing to follow that up, but <laughs> I, I, I actually got just for the punters on there. Um, Pete's obviously a legend of the game, and. I don't think there's been many interviews that I've seen in my time on you. So I just got a couple of um, questions for you. Some of the best players you've played with, can you just um, that you that you? Yeah, um, there's a couple. Of, there's, there's a few that I've played with. Others. I may not uh, give them justice by with my memory recall at my age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a young kid, Venus Gentles, that um, that I coached since he was a 13-year-old right through the end of his 20s, and uh, he was. Uh, a very skilled kid that had all the natural ability in the world. He was one that stands in mind. Yeah, I mean, there's one kid in the, in the Australian League of now, Willie Bishop, I had him when he was a young fellow. There'd be so many of them, I don't yeah. give him any injustice by trying to remember them. I know you, I know you, you mentioned Remus, obviously, people that know he got uh, played the series at Hawaii, the World Cup, and as a 15 or 16 year old? 16 year old. 16 year old. Yeah. But do you um, do you think it, as a player he could have gone a lot further with. Um... Yeah, I do. I, I think he underachieved in some respects. Um, and, and we talked about life decisions before, and you know we, we all have those decisions that we make, and um, it's a shame because I think he could have gone on, gone on to be you know a real legend in touch, and even in um, even in rugby league, you know he, he tried for many teams back back in the day, and um, it's a shame he didn't go on. With it. But I mean, he, you know he made other decisions around family and stuff, so yeah. yeah all right, happened. so okay, we'll talk um, men's open, women's open. What so New Zealand men's open? What do they have to do to beat the Aussie men's open? You think? The first thing is, and it's a biggie, is they need to get fit. Yeah. We are just not fit enough. And, um, and I talk about, you know, fitness, and fitness is, is it's, it's got to be a lifestyle. Yeah. It's got to be part of your everyday life, and it's around nutrition and recovery and all those things that encompass fitness. And we, we just don't get it right. Uh, we're just not committed enough, I feel, um, to be able to, whether it's a, a tournament situation or a three test series. Uh, history shows us that we falter at the end and we, we die off, so fitness is a big part of it. I think uh, the, probably the big one in my memory was the 2010 Trans Tasman, uh, where you were up 5-2, I think, in the last game, and then ended up losing by one. Yeah, yeah, was, so that's an example of yeah, it. You know, you, if you look back at that and you said, OK, did we handle a three-game series even up to the last 10 minutes? And uh, looking at a lot of our results, we don't seem to be able to do that. You know? and I also think there's some big differences why we um, we can't. And one of them is, um, a biggie for me, is we don't have a 12-month season. Yeah. You, know, you guys have a 12-month season and, and some of your biggest comps are in Winter Warden Cup and, and up at White's Hill there. And, um, yeah. We, 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 we can't enthuse our players for 12 months because seven and a half months they want to be all blacks or kiwis or silver ferns or, yeah. you know, and uh, and they play all their winter sports and then for the four and a half months of summer, they change over to summer sports. That's, that's the biggie for me. We can't, um, we, don't, we don't play it in winter apart from a few comps and often they play a bit of social winter touch. Must be a bit of an advantage having a few playing over here now in the, in the competition and with New Zealand selection, which I think is a very good one where they yeah. pick 
a thick cross from here, like I know your New Zealand 30s are very strong, which is um, a lot of them are based here, but you, um, New Zealand have gone for the best side selection, which I think, yeah, so very, had, which we, I think is very good. We had to adjust some of our eligibility policy, because especially in recent years, a lot of families, they all move over here, Kiwi families, and yeah. we, we want to be able to still capture those athletes. If they're still keen to play for New Zealand, then we've made it within our policy that they can do that now. So I think that's a great thing, and uh, they bring a lot of knowledge with them when they come. Yeah. A, lot, a, lot, a lot of good work ethic and stuff around the Australian game, that, that certainly helps us. And also, I just want to just clarify one thing, there's a rumour going around that um, you recruited Gary Sonder to coach the New Zealand men's open for the next um, World Cup, is that correct? Look, I totally tried to keep that quiet, and, uh, <laughs> obviously it's out now, so we're, we're looking at that, we're looking at that together. <laughs> no deal. <laughs> uh, just changing subjects back a bit, Pete, uh, Galaxy is a uh, club team that you've had going for, I think this is the 25th anniversary, is that is that correct this yeah, year? Yeah, we and started um, as a one men's team 25 years ago, November, um, geez, what was it, 1986 or 87, sorry, yeah. And um, you've got your 25th anniversary coming up and there's a big tournament planned in December. Yep, yep, the week before Christmas we've got, um, it's in Auckland where we started, in fact at the same ground where we've been playing for 25 years. And we've got teams from uh, London coming down and some and certain players from our different, we have, we're involved in nine countries around the world where we have club teams and so yeah, that's going to be a big event. That in itself um, must make you very proud that you've actually had your club side and you've moved it to nine countries in the world. You must have met so many friends and 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 your, um, I'd have to say, your promotion of the game itself is, is second to none by a country mile to any other player in the game. So it must give you a big thrill. I was actually there for the 20th anniversary mm. and I mean, to actually be able to say, I created this, I created these teams throughout the world and to have so many people that you know throughout the world through touch football must be one of the biggest thrills out of your career, is that correct to say? It totally is, it totally is. Um, um, and uh, I, you know, I look at them, a lot of them as my kids, you know, they're, they're family, and so yeah, it is, it's uh, it's huge and uh, you run into more, and it's really funny because sometimes you'll run into people like at this tournament and then you'll see people nodding heads and stuff and then you go and make people to go and say hello and then you find out, oh, I'm from Galaxy Gold Coast or I'm from, you know, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's crazy. It's really, it's really awesome. Yeah, and um, it's, it's a big benefit is, is the people. So, you know, if people go overseas now, if they go to San Diego or Edinburgh where we have our team, straight away they've got a bunch of people who can help out. You've got somewhere to stay for a few months and you find a place and help you out with a cheap car or it's, it's the people. So, it's, yeah, it's nice, awesome. It's, um, it's really good. That's great, mate. Um, mate, just finally, we just want to thank you um, for being on Inferno TV. You're a legend as a game, mate, and I've, you've got many friends here, and I know everyone enjoys catching up with you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, 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 Thanks